what is going on everybody and welcome back to the channel if you haven't noticed there are a few new fish in the tank i uh, got three of the zebra barred dart fish and three uh, royal grandmas grandmas i'm not really sure how you pronounce that uh, but they all turned out to be uh you know great fish got them in no problem from live aquaria uh you know did the uh temperature acclimation some um uh water acclimation to get them up to the proper salinity and everything seems to be good to go the uh, zebra dart fish are definitely um, some shy fish at the moment they've been in the tank for a couple weeks now and uh, they come out every once in a while but for the most part they stay hidden under the rocks and they're very fast as far as the royal grandmas uh grandmas i'm probably going to butcher this multiple times they don't come out very often either just waiting for them to kind of get used to the tank and uh, show themselves. So like I said, I picked up three of each and uh, just in, in hopes of uh, them coexisting perfectly in the tank and adding some color as well as some bio load to the Red Sea Reefer 250. You can see here that one of the zebra dart fish is starting to poke out of their little home that they've made under the left rock structure. And again, they, uh, they come out uh, pretty sparingly but I'm hoping that they get uh, used to the environment and the kids running around and they make more of an appearance because they're really interesting fish and I had no clue about these fish until I started researching them on the uh, Live Aquaria website. For those of you that have been following along, you understand that I've been going through some uh, issues with the tank, put some miracle mud in the tank, uh, having low, uh, either zero or low nutrients as far as nitrates and phosphates are concerned. Um, you can probably see in the picture here that some of the SPS, more specifically the bird's nest, have all but gone. So I need to take them out of the tank and be done with them. It's just really been a struggle for me here recently with uh, some of the SPS frags. No really rhyme or reason, but I'm pretty sure it's a low nutrient issue. Hence the reason why I'm adding more fish and I still like to add some more. I also like to tinker with the tank, which is always not such a good thing, but it is what it is. I had an extra optical sensor laying around, so I uh, didn't really know what I could do with that optical sensor. I have uh, an optical sensor in my auto top off. I have one in my sump for high sump alerts. The optical sensor in the auto top off is for an alert whenever it's low. I decided that I would go ahead and uh, throw the third optical sensor that I have for the Neptune Apex in the overflow just because I have it. I have no really other use for it. Took a Dremel, cut out the lid a little bit, and uh, programmed this to shut off the return pump if this sensor is ever indeed uh, triggered. Now the downfall to this is the lid does collect condensation and there is a possibility that that condensation uh, can fall on the sensor and trigger the sensor. So to avoid that uh, disruption, I put a defer statement in there. So, you know, if it defers for, you know, three, four minutes, whatever I got it set to, then, the, then we know that the water level is at that point and it does need to shut off. I also did add the skimmer back to the sump just for the simple reason that my pH was getting a little lower than I like. I am not pulling in air from outside. However, I am pulling in air from outside the stand. So I've got all the adjustments on the skimmer set to open. The, uh, there, I am getting some skimmate and uh, quite a bit of foam actually, but for the most part, I'm using this to aerate the water. Uh, and if it does capture some of the skim, then, then so be it. But I really wanted to run the tank without the skimmer for a little while and see what happened. Uh, you know, I, I think that adding the skimmer back was the right thing to do to get that aeration back into the tank. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of what I'm used to is running a skimmer in tank. And at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's fun to experiment, but this is probably really the direction that I need to be in at this point with this tank. Surprisingly, the Nios 120 fit perfectly into the uh, uh, sump with the critter cage full of Miracle Mud and uh, got no issues there. So if I had that reactor still hanging from the uh, top of the sump, then that would be an issue. It wouldn't fit. But since I'm not running that reactor anymore, uh, it worked out perfect. The uh, algae scrubber is still going uh, well. Um, it, since I removed the skimmer, it has really taken off. So, you know, I don't expect really anything different from the algae turf scrubber. I've uh, been going back and forth on the uh, algae turf scrubber. I'm an avid uh, an advocate for using it for nutrient export. At the same time, with my low nutrients, it's kind of a, uh, you know, a 50 50 
why dose nitrates and phosphates just take the uh, uh, algae scrubber offline in my my perspective is i would rather dose nitrates and phosphates keep keep the system where it's at now and uh, just get the levels where they need to be and then go from there but that's just my opinion so you know take it for what it's worth you know to each their own and how they want to deal with things to be honest with you uh buying nitrate uh powder and then phosphate uh, to increase nitrates and phosphates isn't expensive to begin with I've been asked a couple times what type of uh, filter cups I'm using. These are filter cups from anything acrylic. They're shipped over from Australia. You pay a pretty penny for them because they are shipped over from Australia, but they do hold pond matrix. And to be honest with you, there are cheaper options now on Amazon and uh, on the Marine Depot website. If you look up filter cups, they uh, fit the Red Sea reefers just fine. The, uh, the filter cups may need some trimming. I'm not really sure. I've not dealt with them personally. But I prefer these over filter socks. Uh, every once in a while, I will run some type of uh, mechanical filtration in there. But for the most part, I just let the water trickle over into the pond matrix and be done with it. This is the optical sensor that I have in the sump for high sump alerts. So basically, it is set up the same way that the sensor in the overflow is set up where... Uh, first, I'm going to get an alert if this is ever triggered, and then second off, I am going to uh, shut the return pump off and uh, shut the skimmer off so that nothing overflows. So it's a good fail safe to have. Uh, for those that are interested, I'm using the FMM module, and I actually do have a leak detector up under the tank as well. You know, not surprising, the uh, soft corals are definitely doing well. This bird's nest colony had it was 50 50 but as you can see it's now time to pull it out of the tank and a large number of the sps frags have uh pretty much all but but gone away and and you know my, my elk stays uh pretty consistent so does calcium magnesium and uh my, my water is a pure zero tds and i don't do water changes all that often so you know it, it's it's really just at, i'm at a point now where i really need to get the water chemistry going and then kind of see what happens there I have been dosing uh, some cecum flourish into the tank and my, my phosphates are at a respectable level. Uh, I do feed uh, a frozen cube every day and pellets twice a day. I do add reefroids to the frozen cube a couple times a week and I have acro power uh, on a doser set to dose three times, like three milliliters each dose. So, you know, I, I am, uh, you know, trying to do things uh, naturally, but in the end of the day, I am dosing phosphates a little bit. I am dosing nitrates now. I do have a video coming out on how I've uh, decided to dose nitrates. And again, it's going to be my opinion. Uh, take it for what it's worth. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can teach you something or more importantly, you can teach me something. So as far as whenever it comes to feeding, uh, take a frozen cube. Usually put, a, like I said, some reefoids in it a couple of times a week. Put some Celcon on top of the frozen cube. Let it thaw out. And then just dump it in the tank. And uh, hopefully I can encourage the uh, six new fish that I added to the tank to come out. Have a feast. And then just relax in the Red Sea reefer. The Miracle Mud has been in the tank for about a week now. And, you know, I've not seen any positives or negatives behind it. And I probably won't realistically at this point since I decided to go ahead and dose phosphates and nitrates. Uh, I will say that after having some discussion about this on the forums, look at, you need to, to do a coin toss. What is going to be better for you? Is it going to be Miracle Mud or the Walt Smith Fiji uh, Mud? And it seems like a lot of people like the Walt Smith stuff. But again, take it for what it's worth. I don't have any experience with it. I've walked into this uh, being a pure skeptic of the Miracle Mud, and ultimately we'll just see what happens. And if you aren't aware, I have a full build thread on Reef to Reef. It's almost 30 pages. I usually update it a couple times a week with uh, what I've been doing to the tank, kind of what's going on. So if you're interested in you know those type of live updates, you can go to Reef to Reef, look up Devoted Reefer, or, or click the link in the description below. Um, I am on Instagram, and I do. A a ton of pictures and videos on Instagram as well so you can kind of follow along there with what I've been doing but as far as uh, dosing the nitrates like I said I'm gonna have a video coming out on that specifically on how I chose to go about dosing nitrates and mix the green leaf KNO3 so it's it's very interesting it's, it's a lot of fun and um, I, it's very exciting to actually do a nitrate test and it changed color because for the longest time ever since I've cycled this tank I did not have any nitrates in the tank so it is definitely very encouraging and i will say that uh, you should go slow i did a phosphate test the other day 
and uh, using the Hanna phosphorus checker. And whenever it came back at 200, I, I almost, I almost, I, I don't even know what to say, to be honest with you. I immediately suspected that it was user error. Unfortunately, I had to go to work, so I couldn't test again. Whenever I went to work, it's all I could think about. So as soon as I got home, I did another test and it came back at five. So it, that uh, does verify that it was user error, but whenever it started blinking at 200, I thought it was over. I thought I, I had nuked the tank at that point. It is definitely a balancing act. There is uh, no doubt about that. It's just trying to figure out what works best for you and then just kind of roll with it. Um, again, you know, all of my videos are from my experience or my opinion. I don't know if it's right or if it's wrong. It's just what I've researched and that's the path that I've chose to go down. On a side note, I did order some more uh, phosphate uh, reagent as well as some alkalinity reagent because I usually test alkalinity every day. I did order some Brightwell Coral Amino for, uh, uh, I was talking to Pat Murphy from Murphy's Reefing and uh, he really likes the product so I figured I'd go ahead and give it a try. I don't know uh, too much about it. I'm waiting to get it in. I did also order uh, one of the ATI ICP test kits from Marine Depot. Just like any other week, there's a lot going on. I've always got something going on with the tank, whether that's good or bad, who's to say. But I do appreciate you following along on this journey with me. Uh, give me uh, feedback. Criticism uh, doesn't matter. Just leave it in the comment section below. Go check out the business brief. Reef Tank, I can't remember if it's Reef or Reef Tank. T-H-A-B-I-Z-N-E-S-S. -S. I will leave a link to his channel below. He does a lot of Apex stuff, a lot of microscope stuff, just a lot of cool stuff. Check me out on Instagram at Pelfrey's Reef. Go to the website, pelfrey.net. And, and as always, I do appreciate you following along. I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm.